Hey everyone, this is Pinty Isles Garage, and on today's episode, we're going to be working on the VR6, and on this one, we're going to show you guys how to install your coolant system, because this is a very vital process, even before you get your engine in your car, car or do it in your car. Either way, let's get to work, because this is Pinty Isles Garage. <laughs> So what we're going to show you to do is installing this uh, this main pipe. This is the coolant pipe. Now this is a piece of a billet right here that we got aftermarket for this engine because this is a notorious part for failing. Um, this part right here is actually called the crack pipe, uh, also known as just a coolant uh, hot pipe. Uh, this pipe here always fails for some reason and because 99% of them are made of plastic. If you're willing to fork out the extra cash, get one made out of metal night and day difference all you have to do is buy new o-rings slap them back on and put it back in and you're done no reason why getting a metal a plastic one just for a couple bucks more now the biggest important thing here is your routing your hot and cool lines going into your block and out of your block into your oil cooler and back into your cool uh your main pipe here so once you have your oil cooler installed all the bolts here are 18 foot pounds so 18 18 for the oil cap 18 for these three right here 18 foot pounds so just remember that because we had to remove all this uh before we install put the engine back together and so we're going back and getting the engine all ready for prep for tomorrow for install tomorrow's install day yay so uh you'll see here the o-ring here and there's one over there you're gonna grab the pipe and push it in but before you do that make sure this hose um the one that goes to the actual main coolant pipe um goes in second the first one is actually the one that goes from the back so there's a left and a right oil cooler one the one on the right side is the one that goes to the block there's a little uh bar fitting on the block itself that feeds right into here that's the first one you have to install before this pipe goes in then once you get that done you're going to get this guy going uh you want to get started on the, the bottom portion first because uh, once you get the pipe in, then you'll be able to slip it on to the pipe here. Remember the orientation of the pipe. Um, the little barb that sticks out of it has to be facing uh, pretty much to the left. Um, if you're facing the block like this. Uh, if it's in front of you, that orientation, you have to make sure it fits straight out. Uh, on the factory ones, uh, they have little um, notches to help you line it up and guide it in. Uh, correctly but when you get these aftermarket ones they don't offer that as an option you're going to have to visually line it up and get it in there straight if not it's not going to fit there correctly once you do that the next step is the housing right here um, that goes on the side of the block this is the thermostat housing also known as a cool coolant flange um, goes right here and bolts into this guy and uses three these three bolts right here to mount it in place this right here is a metal coolant flange housing or thermostat housing and you'll notice uh made by euro tuning right there uh this guy is made out of metal versus the plastic one that you can get um these pretty much all you have to do is buy an o-ring and a new thermostat and these are good to go these are reusable so highly recommended getting these parts in metal if you can um you just reap the rewards of just a quality part and the ability to reuse them just by buying inexpensive o-rings and get you back up and going really quick so we're going to show you guys how to install this guy so right here is the mounting point for this uh, part and if you order from euro tuning they give you some really nice hardware right here some nice stainless steel hardware this is what you want to get 
Uh, it's good stuff. Lasts longer. And just I think it's just a much more reliable option over time. So what you want to do is pre uh, set the bolts here. Let's see where does this one go? Oh, no, no. Yeah, just like that. So what you want to do is line up the the hard pipe to the housing and get that in there first. Once it once you feel like it goes all the way on, then get your bolt here there we go nice and flat now if this doesn't go in flat it won't the bolts won't thread in nicely so be careful So once you get these all nice and hand tightened, uh, you're going to set these to 7 foot pounds and that's it. And now your primary portion of the cooling system is done. So this is where you guys got to figure out, um, are you going to be running the secondary water pump still? Or are you going to go like how we did and we're going to run no secondary water pump, no secondary um, radiator. We're going to go bigger fans, bigger radiator and just um not go the route of oem just for the fact that we shaved the engine bay we're gonna wire tuck the harness so we want as clean as possible engine bay that we can make um in this car so we're gonna do the minimal but then we're gonna design and modify better options for cooling uh, obviously we have to improve for the added heat since we're not going to be having a secondary pump and a secondary radiator that's designed for these engines all right so uh, the next step we're going to have is uh, where where does what go pretty much. So this is the upper radiator hose. So this port right here goes to the upper portion. This one actually goes to the lower radiator hose right here. Um, so to show you guys from a little bit further, um, this is the upper hose on your radiator. This is the lower one. This guy is for your secondary water pump which we're going to block off because we no longer use. Um, so pretty much all our cooling is coming from these two pipes. And that's pretty much it since this is a uh, um, an AFP motor and a 12 valve. The, what we have to fa uh, figure out next is the water line that goes to the throttle body. And pretty much we're not going to run a coolant ball. So we're going to figure out, okay, well, no coolant ball. Where are we going to run our modified um, filler cap or modified uh, other portions of the system to again we have to increase cooling because we're increasing heat so we got to be smart in how we uh, modify things and get things to work correctly without causing the engine to overheat all right so the last bit for today's uh, diy is your upper and lower radiator hoses now this guy that's kind of a funky triple one if you guys can see this the one with the really tiny hose on it this is your upper radiator hose this guy right here the one that's all thick this is your lower radiator hose now i'm still trying to figure out which one goes where uh in which direction uh so I'm only assuming right now the bottom one is the more confusing one to me so I'm thinking this guy goes more straight down it's got a nice little bend and then you hook it up to the lower radiator and this one goes to your upper radiator just like that um, now for your heater core you got this is your feed so this is the one that goes to the heater core now goes up and over and then um more likely this line does splice off into this guy right here if you guys see this um 
not this one uh it's all oh, the throttle body's not on here the throttle body also has a coolant line that those feed off of and you tee it off and you go into the throttle body and then the rest of your uh heater core goes down this way uh your secondary water pump is right here which again we're completely getting rid of in the system so there's going to be a lot of uh coolant not coolant but a lot of uh missing stuff on this side of the engine all that's going to be here is the bracket and it goes here for the msd ignition system that we're making for this engine and that's it and then we're going to have a nice clean uh, bypass on all this system over here so when this engine goes actually back into the car we'll show you guys uh the rest of the cooling system because we're going to develop again we're going to develop a cooling ball delete system that cleans your engine base substantially number two you are going to have to upgrade your radiator and your fans. Maybe not your fans, but for sure your radiator has to be upgraded uh, to a double roll, double roll, all aluminum or a double roll, um, you know, uh, just a performance radiator because you cannot use the factory radiator for this engine anymore just because we're changing a lot of the cooling system in here. So today's DIY is pretty simple and straightforward, but we wanted to break down to you the primary portions of the cooling system on this engine, which is the main pipe here, the thermostat housing flange that goes here, and the upper and lower radiator hoses. There are gonna be a couple extra hoses, but not much in comparison to um, the vacuum lines that we're at the repair and design because we have to redo what's here right here uh for the uh for this guy right here for the the manifolds um a flapper valve that's built into it uh we're going to design a, a pretty much a cleaner system that mounts to the lower bracket here uh since we're no longer going to be using an sai the sai pump is going to be deleted so the beauty about that super easy access to your main pipes and super easy access to do repairs look at that get rid of the smog system and for some reason things work out better hmm who knew who, who'd have thought <laughs> so uh that's where we're at the moment uh thanks for watching this uh quick and short episode of binchow's garage thank you thank you